Parker Planning Commission meeting of October 29th, 2020 to order at 7.04 p.m. Uh, please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. John? I pledge allegiance yes. to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, John. Uh, next item, uh, roll call. I'll just call the roll. Uh, Ileana? Present. Susan? Uh, present. Rich? Here. Eric? John? Here. Tracy is absent. Ruth Ann? Here. Kim? Here. Anthony? Here. Sorry, I wasn't on, I was muted. Okay, thank you. And chair is here. Uh, Rosemary, who's seated for Eric tonight? Do you know? Would it be Susan? I don't think she's hearing me. Susan, I think you're seated. Okay. 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 For Eric. Okay. Let's uh, next item is uh, are there any additions to or deletions from the agenda? None. None for me. Uh, no, sir, there are not. Okay. And sir, also, if you would, can you make Rosemary the host again, please? Uh, how would I do that? <laughs> if you right click on her name under panelist. Okay, just give me a second. Or okay. hit the right, I, don't, I, I have a I have an apple. <laughs> I don't right click on anything. Okay. <laughs> so, so make so it go I go down to make host. Yes. Yeah. And hit Rosemary. Okay. I did. That works. Thank you, sir. Okay. And Rosemary, the chat is on. Yes, it is. If okay. you hit the three button, can you just reach it? Nope, the one up above. Yep. Talking about the Q&A? Yeah. Go to that. So, can I go to the settings? Right hand corner there. <clears throat> uh, unclick the top button. Maybe. Just let me know when we're ready. We're good. Yeah. All right, sir. I think we can uh, go ahead and move on. And for those members of the public that are using the chat, um, we're not going to be able to respond to those during the public hearing. Uh, so there is a public comment uh, for each one of these items where you can uh, make your comments and ask questions. Okay. Uh, approval of the minutes. So are, there any, are there any changes? or corrections to the minutes from the October 22nd, 2020 meeting? No, sir. No, sir. Uh, do we have a motion to approve? I move to approve the October 22nd, 2020 meeting minutes. I second. Been uh, moved by John, seconded by Eliana, that we approve the minutes October 22nd, 2020 meeting. I will call the question. Eliana? Aye. Uh, 
Susan? Aye. Rich? Aye. John? Aye. Ruthann? Aye. Kim? Aye. Chair is aye. Next item on the agenda are public hearings. Let me talk a little bit about public hearings. Uh, thank you for attending the Parker Planning Commission meeting. Before the meeting begin, before the public hearing aspect of the meeting begins, I emphasize that if you wish to make public comments on any item at this hearing, you must be joined into the Zoom webinar link posted on the town's website, www.parkeronline.org slash planning commission. Facebook Live participants are only able to view and listen to the meeting. Now would be a good time to leave Facebook Live and join the Planning Commission meeting on Zoom if you wish to comment on any agenda item by using the Zoom raise your hand feature. We appreciate your attendance at the Planning Commission and your cooperation. We as sitting members take the role, responsibility and duties of the Planning Commission seriously. When we as the Planning Commission review site plans, zonings or other land use requests during a public hearing, the Planning Commission is sitting as a quasi judicial body. For projects that are under review by the town, we are unable by state law to discuss the matters of the project when approached by members of the public outside of a public hearing. This does not mean that we are not engaged or interested in hearing from members of the public. Quite the opposite. We encourage and appreciate public participation as a part of the public hearing process. The public hearing is where we listen to comments, concerns, technical analysis, and other information provided by town staff, the developer, and the public. The information combined with the requirements of the land development ordinance, state and federal laws allows the planning commission to remain objective, fair and balanced when making a recommendation or taking action. Simply put, the planning commission is required by law to remain impartial to ensure that each project, the developer, town staff and overall community get the due process it deserves. So uh, item number six, A, Anthology North, plan development amendment number two. We will open the public hearing at 7-11. Uh, Brianna? We have to share the screen first. Okay. That's better. They'll go to the Zoom meeting. I thought you saw it. Okay. Oh, no. no. There we go. That's it. All right, thanks. There you go, Brianna. Perfect. Good evening, Chairman and Planning Commission. This is a proposal for a plan development amendment to both the PD guide and map. The subject property is located on the south side of Hess Road between Chambers Road and Matzenbacher Road. The applicant PCS group is requesting the approval of a zoning amendment for segment one of the Anthology North PD. Specifically, the applicant is requesting the following changes. Planning area boundary amendments, lot standard revisions, and partial waiver resolution compliance. The applicant is requesting to amend these planning area boundaries to support the dendritic design. This design is a way to preserve natural features of the site, such as floodplains, drainage ways, and existing topography. Incorporating the dendritic design has resulted in an increase of open space of roughly 40 acres. It is important to note that while the planning area boundaries are proposed to be reconfigured, there is no increase in overall number of units that are currently permitted in these planning areas. The current proposal is only for segment one. Future rezoning amendments will take place for segments two and three to accommodate the dendritic design. The applicant is requesting to revise lot standards to accommodate the market demand for attached housing types. The current PD has a standard minimum lot size of 2,500 square feet for single family attached residential products. These lot sizes are typically too large for standard townhomes and duplex developments. 
The applicant is proposing a minimum lot size of 1,200 square feet for a single family attached and duplex residential product. Staff has found that the reduction in lot size is common for these types of home products and is consistent with other lot size requirements in the town. The lot size reduction will not result in the change of allowed number of units for residential units. In May of 2019, Town Council approved a partial waiver resolution to allow the applicant to develop the subject property in three segments. The first segment is generally the southeastern one-third of the subject property, with segment two and three being the balance of the property. The partial waiver resolution was approved provided two obligations were met. The first being one-third of planning area 15 be developed for only commercial uses. The applicant completed the outline analysis found in the waiver resolution and has provided approximately 14 acres of commercial land within planning area 15A outlined in red on the screen, whereas the remaining area will remain mixed use found in planning area 15B. The second obligation is to provide a parks, trails, and open space master plan for all neighborhood and community parks found in segment one. The Anthology North Parks, Trails, and Open Space Master Plan shows compliance with the requirements outlined in the partial waiver resolution and the new park standards adopted by the town on October 19th of 2020. This plan will continue to be updated with associated parks in each segment as they are rezoned and they are developed. Staff and planning commissioners have received an email from two town residents on October 26th and October 29th concerning the fire station location found in segment three. Both staff and the applicant have started conversations with South Metro Fire District concerning this location. Both staff and the applicant will continue these conversations as the project move forward. Staff has determined that the location for the fire station will be addressed with the segment two rezoning and development. At this time, there are no proposed changes to the fire station site as this is in a future phase. There are nine criteria used to evaluate a rezone. This, these criteria are used to ensure that the rezone is consistent with the surrounding area, will not result in overuse of the land, will create traffic congestion or be detrimental to the town. Staff has to determine that the proposed changes will better align with the nine criteria as incorporating the dendritic design preserves the existing natural areas, is consistent with the master plan, and does not change residential densities. Staff has reviewed the proposal and as outlined in staff report has determined that the project is consistent with the master plan. The project satisfies the nine criteria required in the land development ordinance for a reason and the public knows requirements have been met. Staff is recommending that Planning Commission recommend Town Council re approve the requested Anthology North Plan Development Rezone. Staff is available for any questions Planning Commissioners may have. The applicant is also available this evening for any questions and they would like to provide a presentation at this time. You're muted, Gary been a technological nightmare tonight. Uh, we'll just go down the roll and see if there's any questions uh, for you, Brianna. Uh, Ileana? None. Uh, Susan? No. Rich? None. John? None. Ruthann? Yeah, I just want to thank you and, and for talking about what segment the fire station is in. I appreciate that. And also, I just wanted to comment that the vicinity map that you showed actually didn't show the segment north of Hess in that northwest corner. Um, but the presentation itself was good, and thank you. Kim? So is the fire station part of the rezone, or is the rezone strictly the kind of irregular shape of the lots to accommodate more of the natural uh, open space kind of natural resources? So the Rezone is for to incorporate the natural topography that's out there, but we're really only looking at the segment one area. We aren't to the phase three of this plan at this time. Okay, thank you. Uh, and I have 
No questions. And so uh, the applicant, uh, do we want to unmute them or whatever we do, Rosemary, to allow them to do their presentation? Yeah, I can't remember. Uh, no, you didn't. I, I think I'm unmuted. I don't know if you can hear yeah, me. Yeah, I, I can hear you. Yeah, John? Gotcha, John. Yeah. yeah. So if you could just give your name and address for the record, please, John. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, are you going to... Uh, okay. uh, yeah. Oh, no, other side. We're getting it ready for you. Fantastic. All right. There we go. Perfect. Uh, okay, so good evening. Uh, John Prestwich with PCS Group, uh, 200 Calumat Street, Denver, Colorado, 80223. Uh, first off, a big thank you to Brianna and really all of town staff for uh, their help in getting us here this evening. And thank you for allowing us to make this presentation through Zoom. Um, we really do appreciate that. Um, on the screen as sort of an introduction image is a, a custom shade shelter uh, that we've designed for the anthology community. Uh, we think it really is, uh, you know, starts to highlight and focus views into the natural feel of the park and open space areas within the community. Brianna, if you can go to the next slide, please. So, uh, you know, we're big believers in collaboration um, and we truly recognize uh, that it, it takes a team effort uh, to put together a proposal for a successful application. And I always want to acknowledge the effort that it takes uh, for the creation of a new community for the town of Parker. Um, this slide highlights many of the team members that have helped us get to this point uh, this evening. And again, we wanna recognize all of the input that town staff has provided uh, as we have worked together throughout this process. Uh, if you wouldn't mind going to the next slide, please. Okay, so this evening, you know, we're here to present uh, really what we think of as a minor amendment to the currently approved PD for the anthology community. Um, there's a few items I wanted to highlight. One is, you know, basically the reason we're pursuing an amendment to the currently approved PD is to incorporate the uh, dendritic planning principles. And those principles really evaluate the natural drainages on the property and kind of works the plan around those natural drainage areas. So in general, this style of planning relies uh, more, or sorry, less of uh, on engineered solutions and it, and it really uh, utilizes the natural terrain as best possible to manage the uh, drain. So this has really been studied on the area east of Chambers Road uh, and it's really where the changes to the currently approved uh, PD are. Um, it's possible, as Brianne mentioned, as we study the west side of the property and, and really north towards uh, Stro that, or sorry, towards Hess that uh, uh, we may need to adjust boundaries with dendritic planning principles, but uh, we're really not at that point in the project yet. Um, as part of this amendment, I think it's important to point out that the park and open space areas have increased by, you know, Brianna mentioned over 40 acres. There's actually 28 and some odd acres that were dedicated to the town. Uh, so if you actually compared PD to PD, we're actually a little over 74 acres from the currently approved PD. Uh, and that, and, and with no additional units or any increase in density being proposed with this PD amendment request. Uh, if you wouldn't mind going to the next slide, please. Okay, so bigger picture. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with this, but just for reference, uh, you know, Anthology is located uh, west of Motzenbacher Road in the current Anthology neighborhood, uh, south of Hess Road, north of what will ultimately be the extension of Stroh Road uh, and east of the Ruder Hess Reservoir. Wouldn't mind moving to the next slide. Okay, so this image is the currently approved PD, uh, basically from roughly 2013, 2015. And then over top, what just kind of popped in uh, is really the location of the two drainages in, in the segment one area that's caused the changes to the planning boundaries that exceeded the allowed 10% change that's kind of built in to the PD. That's what really has caused this request. Uh, I guess, you know, one other uh, relatively minor revision is to reclassify an area that was originally uh, uh, THE, which essentially allowed townhomes to SFE, the different zoning designation, which will keep that area as single family. Um, it's a minor change, but it, it felt like it was more in keeping with the existing anthology, anthology neighborhood. Uh, if you wouldn't mind moving to the next one, please. Thank you very much. Um, this slide shows the proposed PD amendment. Again, uh, just highlighting the areas where the open space was added. Um, additionally, some of the other corridors did uh, widen a little bit as part of that dendritic study. 
Um, and again, this study was focused uh, really on the east side of chambers. Um, and again, this proposal does not add any units or increase in densities from the uh, uh, currently approved PD. You wouldn't mind jumping to the next one. So here we have the currently approved PD on the left side of the screen and the uh, proposed PD amendment on the right side of the screen. And this is really um, you know, highlighting the land use areas. It shows again uh, where we're proposing to change uh, that area from uh, the current zoning designation of THE, again, allowing townhomes to SFE. But again, the proposal keeps the same number of units as is currently approved with no in densities. You wouldn't mind moving to the next one, please? So on the screen now, again, uh, the current approved PD is on the left and the uh, proposed uh, PD amendment is on the right side of the screen. This slide highlights really the open space and park areas. And again, as overall, uh, as part of this process and working with the dendritic planning principles, again, focused on the area east of Chambers, in total, including that area in the uh, northeast corner that's been dedicated to the town already, uh, this the PD amendment provides about 74 acres of additional park and open space for that area, for the overall project, I should say. And that equates to about a 26% increase from the currently approved PD. If you wouldn't mind flipping to the next slide. Because this one, this, this next slide really crystallizes, I think, the, the uh, character of the dendritic design. So um, we are currently working on a preliminary plan for a portion of the community. And what you see here is how the neighborhoods are being planned to respect the natural drainages. Um, so the, the drainages were identified, the, the uh, highest value areas of natural vegetation were identified, and then we actually worked kind of backwards from there. So for example, the uh, grading for the home sites ends instead of like a mass overlock grading, which you know we've, we've certainly seen, uh, the grading for the home sites in these locations ends at the rear of the lots so that it actually protects the natural vegetation and drainage corridors. And we're using the drainage corridors, uh, we're trying to get some double duty out of them, we're using those as trail corridors, and we're also incorporating park areas uh, within those corridors. And then even working with the uh, drainage team to design any of those corridors, the, the uh, storm ponds, etc., to actually have some amenity uses and not simply just sort of look like a, you know, a utilitarian stormwater, uh, you know, we're trying to make them features of the community. Uh, in the bottom right, it depicts about a four acre neighborhood park um, that we're currently designing. It's actually right in the center of the screen as well. Um, it, that, that park uh, has a multi-purpose turf area has exercise equipment along the looped trail system, has seating areas that really highlight the natural drainage corridors, provide interesting viewing options, and well, as well as that sort of iconic uh, anthology shade shelter that we showed you at the very beginning um, with picnic benches, play areas, et cetera, trying to have a real natural focus. If you wouldn't mind going to the next slide. And, and actually, Brianna kind of hit on this, um, but uh, you know, as part of the agreement with the town, you know, ba basically allowing us to phase the design of the anthology community, we were asked to provide some additional information. Um, one was the, the request, I guess, for a conceptual design um, of how the mixed use area, planning area 15, could be designed to ensure that a minimum of one third of that planning area would be reserved for commercial uses. Um, this is at the intersection of Chambers Road and Great Plains Way, which is about 1,500 uh, feet to the south of the intersection of Hess and Chambers Road. And again, this, this uh, design depicts a little over a third of the planning area, about 14 acres as commercial uses, uh, primarily along the Chambers Road frontage and then wrapping a little bit along Great Plains Way. Um, this is all designed in accordance with the town's development design standards. And I think it's, you know, it's important to note it's not a final design. It's really intended to ensure that in the future, one third of this area can ultimately be uh, a, a reserved for a commercial use. If you wouldn't mind jumping to the next one. And though, so sort of similar to that previous slide, um, you know, part of the additional information that was requested was an overall parks uh, master plan, parks and trails master plan for the community. And again, this, this area is primarily focused uh, on the area east of Chambers Road. Uh, one of the exciting things that we think about with this area is that it includes a community park. 
that's over 30 acres in size. Um, you know, we think this is almost 32 acres of fun in the heart of anthology. Um, the park is connected to many, many acres of trails and open space areas. Uh, it will include a pool, clubhouse, uh, off-street parking, a series of terraced, iconic themed playgrounds, a trike track, bike trails, overlooks, shade shelters, outdoor event areas, large multi-purpose turf area. And, you know, we're really excited about the collaboration we've already had with the Town of Parker Parks Department in developing these initial uh, park concepts and we're anxious to move into more detailed design. Um, on the bottom of this slide, there are two more park areas, um, which also will include the play areas, the iconic shelters, trails, turf, uh, benches, all, all of those uh, uh, elements as well. Wouldn't mind jumping to the next slide. And again, this is from the Parks Master Plan. This slide highlights four additional parks uh, to the south of where we were just looking, east of Chambers Road. And, and part of the purpose uh, of providing a parks master plan is to ensure that the parks are not all the same. So for example, uh, the park at the top left, Park LL, is being themed as a swing park. So it has really large oversized platform uh, swings as well as traditional swings. Um, whereas the park on the top right, TT, is being themed to include, we're kind of working with the topography, it includes embankment slides, um, slides that follow the natural terrain. And then once you get down, it includes climbing areas, again, utilizing the natural topography. Um, park YY is a little bit more of a traditional park uh, with more of an open turf play area, playground areas, uh, permanent cornhole. And it also features, we think is kind of cool, uh, we found a, a really interesting piece of play equipment that includes like a zip line. So I think that's gonna be a really fun element. Uh, and Park D1 includes some uh, preserved vegetation areas, a looped trail, horseshoe courts, again, playground areas, uh, the iconic uh, anthology shelter with uh, picnic tables and seating. So again, the Parks Master Plan is trying to make sure that we're, we're really you know, hitting as many uh, different ideas so that they're not all the same as we move through the design process. Uh, final slide, please. So you know, again, just to summarize, um, this proposal is for some minor modifications to the existing PD, really to bring the plan into conformance with the dendritic design principles, really being utilized for the community design. Uh, the proposal uh, increases the amount of park and open space significantly, uh, as well as changes one area that was originally anticipated as THE to SFE, minor road adjustments and lot size adjustments to facilitate future planning. Uh, and finally, staff has recommended approval based on the review of the approval criteria, and we're hopeful you will as well. Um, and that, that really concludes our presentation. We're, we're here for questions as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. Uh, questions, Ileana? None for me at the moment. Okay. Susan? No questions. Rich? Uh, yes, I have a couple. Regarding the uh, duplexes and townhomes, if you're cutting the duplex lot size from 2,500 to 1,200, is that for both sides of the complex or the duplex or just the whole? No, uh, it, it, one, one one side. One side. So, so, so the, each side would be 1,200. Correct. For okay, and the townhomes, the same thing. Is that uh, same? Is that a two-story townhome, or do you know at this point? Well, we don't know for sure at this point, but uh, um, it would be the the lot would be twelve hundred for each unit. Okay, all right, uh, that's all I had. Thanks, thank you, John. Uh, no questions. Uh, Ruthann. No questions. Kim. Um, so I do love the concept about you know working with topography and making sure everything is. Um, you know, allows for a real pretty backdrop. My question is, I'm assuming you're working with the drainage team to ensure that a lot of these places don't get washed out and become just an eyesore. I'm, there's gotta be some engineering that's going into all this, obviously, Lord. but what is in place to ensure all that? So, well, I mean, town staff will, it has already been reviewing um, you know, where, where storm ponds, et cetera, et cetera, will go. But, and it's not, it's not to, to take place of not doing any storm uh, detention or anything of those natures. There will be, uh, you know, but it's, it's doing things like having boulders 
uh, as as a a way to slow down the water versus like a a uh, now we used to do these sheet pile um, cutoffs that that do the same thing but they look very engineered versus a, a nat more naturalistic approach. The, the the one image that I showed where uh, there's a pond incorporated in the park that pond is probably 50% larger than it would would be if it was just an engineered solution, but it still provides all the engineering benefits. It just by, <clears throat> excuse me, by having it that much larger, we're able to make the edges more uh, natural looking, uh, but it still provides the same engineering uh, benefits of moving stormwater and making sure that, that flows are slowed down and not uh, eroding and capturing all of the uh, stormwater that it needs to do. So, so it sounds like you are incorporating natural topography, natural features as part of your stormwater BMPs, which I think is great. Okay, that's all I have. Okay, uh, questions, any further questions for Brianna? Uh, Ileana? None for me. Uh, Susan? No, none. Rich? Uh, none. Uh, John? None. Ruthann? No, none. Uh, Kim? No. I just have one, Brianna, uh, just to clarify again, that this particular parcel that we're looking at tonight does not include the fire station. The fire correct. station will come at a later hearing of some nature. That's correct. Okay. All right. Just wanted to clarify that. All right. Um, as this is a public hearing, uh, we are going in a moment, we're going to open the discussion to public comment. If you have a comment uh, on the particular item before us tonight, uh, you need to please state your name and address for the record. And you have three minutes to speak and that, that will be time just in the interest of uh, everybody's time tonight. Uh, and if you know, if you just agree with what people before you have said, it's okay to say, I agree with the previous commenters. We don't, you don't need to repeat your testimony because uh, it'll, it'll be noted in the, in, the, in the record of the meeting. And so we will open now the public comment. Rosemary, some hands waving there. Yes, sir. Okay. So the first one uh, chair is Alan Meshberg. All right, Mr. Meshberg, uh, could you please give your address for us? 15798 East Indian Brook Circle. Thank you, sir. Um, I understand important. what you said about the fire station, and I realize that's going to be on another uh, phase. But you did mention that there's a conversation ongoing, and since my home is directly behind the proposed station, I would like to get in on that conversation that you mentioned. It's, uh, uh, well, we'll respond to these. Uh, and so that's your comment? Well, my comment is I'm not very uh, happy with the proposed fire station, but as you said, that will be on another phase. Okay. So we'll deal with that then. All right. Thank you, Mr. Meshberg. Yep. Uh, next. Next, Mr. Chair, is Ian Elfner. Uh, Mr. Elfner? Hello. How are you? I'm good. Could you just state your address, please? 15750 East Indian Brook Circle. Um, regardless of whether or not it's being addressed, I'm still going to speak about it. The fire station and the location of the fire station. Um, you know, you have received an email from me specifically talking about it. What we're talking about is 4.13 acres of 1,207.9 acres, which is the equivalent of 0.34%, which is effectively one third of 1% of the overall project. I, I see what you guys are doing here. I think it's great. I think there's a lot of good things that are gonna come out of this. At the end of the day, we urge you to not approve the PD amendment until an alternative location for the fire station south of Hess Road can be determined and the fire station is shown elsewhere within the proposed PD amendment. Um, 
do not approve this PD amendment without first addressing the fire station issue to make sure that there's actually space for the fire station relocation. Nothing says, quote, welcome to Horse Creek and welcome to Parker, quite like having a fire station built on four acres of vacant land right at the entry to Horse Creek neighborhood and right in some of the current Horse Creek residents' backyards. In addition, we're all concerned about having to listen to sirens at all times of the day and night. I personally reached out to uh, South Metro contact Mike Delorfano with South Metro a few times and he indicated that relocating the station is in fact a possibility and he's provided the underlying developer with geographic parameters of where they would consider relocating the station. The time to address this issue is now, not later. Keep in mind, proposed fire station was determined before Horse Creek existed, which is why it is currently shown where it is. Times have changed and Horse Creek's built out now and the fire station has remained where it is originally planned many, 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 many years ago. Generally, it takes more, makes more sense for the developer the land to locate it in the commercial area of Anthology North South of Hess. Ask South Metro Fire if they are open to relocating the fire station and I think you'll find out that, spoiler alert, they are open to it. 30 seconds left, Chair. Okay. Again, we urge you to not approve this amendment and look out for the existing residents of Horse Creek. The last thing anything anybody wants to hear is. Thank you, Mr. Elfner. I'm not finished. I have some. Yeah, time. you are. I have some time. Bryce, time? Uh, three minutes. All right. Next hand up. The next hand up is Brandy Wilkes. Uh, Ms. Wilkes, uh, would you please give your address? Hi guys, I'm at 17402 East Newtown Parkway, Parker 80134. Thank you. Yeah, so um, I'm actually running for town council, so I'm partly interested in this just so I can stay on top of the town, but I also had several uh, residents reach out to me. And so um, I do understand 100% about the different phases that we're in. My only thing with the fire department, as everybody has mentioned, is I kind of agree with the fact that it should be addressed right now because we are doing the rezoning. And I do think that it should be considered part of this um, the section that we're discussing tonight. So um, long story short, just I know you guys have all read the master plan as we all have, but just for the people who haven't, I just want to reiterate that on section 12.6 and 5.B and 6.10, it talks about how um, there will be no use of the land that will impact um, and be a detrimental impact to the abutting properties. We all discussed it, but I do think there is a great location for it at the current development that, that um, sorry, the current phase that you all are talking about tonight. And so I do wanna see um, maybe more of a discussion to you, John, the developer, about if that's something that can be discussed since you're already talking about the changes that you're making to this current zone, about the possibility of adding the fire station movement since we are discussing this exact location right here. And I know we're not discussing this spot where the fire station is currently. So I just want to um, maybe ask you, like, is that something that you have considered moving it to, let's say, the corner of Hessen Chambers, since that is the current area that you guys are um, discussing with the changes made? Uh, Brandy, we'll respond to questions when we've got all of the uh, public comment taken. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, next raised hand, uh, Rosemary. Are there any more? Yes, sir. Just one moment, please. Okay. Um, a gentleman or a lady with the initials GF that will need to state their name and address for the record. Yes. Uh, speaker, you're on. If you could give your name and address for the record, please. Uh, Gary Farenbrook, 12219 South Red Sky Drive. Again, another Horse Creek resident. Uh, well, can you hear me? Yes, I can, Gary. 
Okay, um, I don't want to beat a dead horse. I think uh, Ian Elkner uh, captured my thoughts uh, almost verbatim. Uh, well, I'm somewhat unique to to his argument in that I'm in the lower part of Horse Creek, but nonetheless, it still will have a huge impact on uh, our quality of life in this area if we have a fire station right across the street. So. I, I won't take any more of your time. Thanks for what you're doing. And I hope you look at this before you move forward. Thank you. Next hand, Rosemary. Is Rich Sanders. Okay, Rich. Could you give your address for the record, please? Rich Sanders, 15786 East Indian Brook. Well, welcome, Rich. Um, this is his wife, Sherry Sanders. Hi, Sherry. Welcome. Good evening. Um, I, again, will not beat a dead horse. This fire station is directly behind our home. So I am just going to say that Mr. Elfner couldn't have said it any better, that we hope that you guys would sincerely take a second look at getting this fire station out behind our house. Okay. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you. Hmm. Next hand, Rosemary. Thank you. Um, Chris Jorgensen. Uh, welcome, Chris. Uh, could you state your address for the record? Yes, I'm 16550 East Firefly Avenue. Um, I, well, welcome. Thank you. I'm also part of Horse Creek, and uh, I just noticed a slide that said, you have, with this uh, project, there's going to be 363 acres of park and open space. And I'm also against the fire station being where it's currently located. And it, I know it's part of a different phase, but if, like you have, if you have 363 acres, moving four acres of open space and park to a different segment, to where the, and maybe put it in the phase that it's in now, it, I think it would benefit a like Horse Creek tremendously, especially because it would be a detriment to people who live behind it. And I just, um, I, hopefully you guys will look into this. That's it. All right. All right. Thanks, Chris. The next one, Chair, is Kathy Northcutt. Welcome, Kathy. Could you state your address for the record, please? Hi there, yes, it's 12150 South Buffalo Gap Trail in okay. the Horse Creek area. And I'm actually new to this, so I was excited to come see how the development was going and what was happening and what was uh, up for discussion and surprised to learn that the fire station is going in that location. And I too am concerned about having it there, would like to have it in a different location. I would love to have it talked about tonight if the different location is gonna be in something you're approving tonight. And I'd like to know if in fact it isn't gonna be, um, if the, if the approve, approval process isn't gonna stop this evening, is there a date and time and location that it's gonna be addressed so that I'm notified because I would like to be aware of that. Okay, thank you, Kathy. Thank you. Uh, next, Rosemary. Next is uh, P. Davis. Okay, uh, Mr. and Ms. Davis, could you uh, give your address for the record, please? Hi, um, can you hear me? Yes. My name is Paulette Davis. I Hi, also, Paulette. I also live in Horse Creek. Um, my address is 12085. South Great Plain Court. And I just have two comments. Um, I agree with all of the other comments about the fire station, although I am not as directly impacted by that as they are because I live over by the stadium. Okay. So I'm, I'm a bit further for them, but I support them and their concerns as we had to deal with the way the town handled the building of the bubble behind our home. Um, and felt that we really 
even though we won the appeal on that, the town really did not listen to what the homeowners wanted and needed rather than just going on the legalese of what you can can't approve, I guess, to, I don't know another way to say that. Um, the other comment that I had is in looking at the slides that were presented, I think it looks fabulous. I, I love all the trees and the plants and all of that, but when it came to us trying to develop and make our property look nicer, specifically on the section along Chambers Road, going from Newland Gulch Boulevard south to Stormview, our plan was completely destroyed and pulled apart. And we were told that we could put nothing in but rock at this time. And I think it's odd that they're allowed to put in, well, excuse me, rock and trees. Um, and I think it's interesting that their plan is very elaborate in how much sod they have, how many trees and plants they have, but yet our community was not afforded the same thing. That's all I wanted to say. Okay, thank you, Paulette. Yep. Next hand, Rosemary. Kristen Andrews. Kristen, uh, uh, hello, are you there? Uh, I think Please. You, I think you did the wrong person. Kristen Andrews. Okay. Kristen, are you there? <clears throat> Shall we come back? If Chair, why don't we come back to her? Okay. Who's the next one? Jacqueline, Jacqueline Carter. Jacqueline, are you there? Um, I am, yes. Oh, great. Could you state your address for the record? It's 15792 East Indian Brook Circle. Well, welcome. Thank you. And also in, in regards to the fire station, I know it wasn't supposedly being brought up tonight, but it's out of all my neighbors who have spoken tonight, it is directly in my backyard, that, that little spot. I mean, we have a, a nice little open area and then south of, south of Hess Road, you're building this you know huge, which by the way, looks like a beautiful community, but I would think that maybe somewhere in there, they could find a little bit of room to, to rearrange the, you know, the, the fire station. Um, again, you, you guys are talking about this, it's a, it's a, to us, it's a very small piece of property and it's behind, you know, five or six of us that have lived here for, I've been here for 14 years now as one of the first houses up here. And again, just um, if we could deal with this now, I know it's something that's going to be in the future, but um, if they could really look at this and maybe find a little different place for it, that's kind of out of people's backyards. Okay. Thank you, Jacqueline. Do you have any more? What was that lady's name? Kristen? Yeah, Kristen Andrews. Why Andrew? Do you want to try it? Yeah. Kristen Andrews. Are you there, Kristen? Hello. Do we have other hands, Rosemary? No, Chair, we do not. Uh, I, I guess we will go ahead and close the public comment portion of the meeting. Uh, further information from staff and or applicant, uh, Ileana? That, that I'm clear because I kept hearing the fire station. We are not making a decision on that right now this evening, correct? That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Susan? Uh, no other questions. Rich? Uh, none. John? Uh, none. Eliana covered mine. Uh, Ruthann? I have a few. Um, first, if, if this uh, PD amendment was denied, tonight or we recommended denial and so there was no uh change would that change the location of the fire department tonight uh if it was 
a recommendation recommendation for denial, there would be no zoning change made. So all of the planning areas would remain the same for the entire PD. And we would we would also not have the the new additional dendritic design implemented, correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, one of the questions that was raised by one of the public, uh, one of the members of the public was whether or not the developer was amenable to entering into discussions with uh, South Metro about moving that piece of, uh, moving that use to, uh, to another area. And the other question was, why can't that uh, use be placed in uh, the section that we're actually uh, voting on tonight? And I was wondering if uh, John would like to address that. Uh, sure, I, I can address it uh, as well. Chris Elliott from the, uh, the I, I'm a land planner, landscape architect. Uh, Chris Elliott from the actual development group is here as well. But okay. um, if, if I stumble, he'll, he'll kick me <laughs> off and, and, and jump in. But the, the long and short of it is the fire station was raised to us pretty darn late. Like we just, this, this started to just come out. So our team has actually contacted uh, South Metro Fire and has started to talk about, hey, can we move this to a different location? Where, uh, I almost wish we had that. So what we're actually working on is basically the area probably about 1500 feet where we showed that planning area 15 and to the south of that. Well, that's primarily all residential at this point. So I think where people are suggesting that they would like to potentially see it, I heard was at the intersection of Hessen Chambers. Now we can certainly, we're not working on that area right now, that's part of segment two, but we can certainly have conversations with the fire, uh, with South Metro Fire about that. And we are absolutely happy to include everyone who uh, spoke up tonight. Um, we're happy to, to have those conversations and see what we can when work on to uh, move that to, the, to a different location. Thank you, John. Thank you. Ruth Ann? Um, yeah, the last one I had a note on is a question came up in public comment about when this uh, segment that uh, you were just discussing, when that would actually, we'd start talking about that, where that even comes onto the table. Yeah, you know, the timing of that obviously is a, is, is, is difficult to, to figure out exactly. I mean, we're working on segment one which includes roughly 1,500 uh, homes. So when we would jump up to the north area segment two, um, you know that that probably wouldn't be for a while. However, if we want to start these conversations about moving a fire station location, we could accelerate that from a zoning standpoint. We wouldn't we wouldn't be actually doing any development in segment two for a long time. But in terms of modifying the the uh, zoning that's not we can have those conversations right we can start right now okay thank you john uh kim i do have a call and i guess i just need some clarification probably from bryce is if can we approve the rezone How do I want to put this? Can we approve the rezone with a condition that the fire station, I'm, I can't say be moved for sure, but that the talks of the fire station be moved? And then the second question is, how many homes have to go in before a fire station is constructed? So I can answer the first question um, the second one is a more technical question, which would be a, a South Metro question. Um, so the first part of that is um, you can't approve this one with, you cannot approve this one with the condition to resolve the firehouse. Um, that would need to either be um, addressed as a continuation or with kind of the guidance that we've talked about now that a segment two so there will be future zoning, future applications, public, future public hearings within Anthology North. So this is certainly not the last time we'll be talking about this project as it continues through its phases. And so when we actually get to the portion of the plan, if there's been no movement or we find out that 
um, the developer, the planning, um, have not really worked with the fire department or with the nearby residents, at that point we can deny that portion of anthology or their plan because of that, correct? Right, so, so staff right now, uh, the developer and South Metro as mentioned are having conversations. So we are certainly looking at addressing it. What addressing it lo looks like, we're just not there yet. Um, there are a lot of other thoughts besides moving the bubble in terms of determining how a uh, fire station is located. Um, so we're certainly starting the conversation and we certainly expect by the next time you see a zoning amendment for one of these next segments, um, we'll have some analysis and, and answers. Um, property owner, South Metro and, and staff. All right, thank you. Okay, any further questions? Hearing none, we will close the public hearing at eight o'clock. Uh, planning commissioner discussion, Ileana. I guess for me, I, I sort of want to bottom line it is that while the fire department discussion is for the future, we still have, we have a, a we have a responsibility to make the decision tonight. So I'm going to be in favor of moving it forward. Uh, Susan. Um, since the fire station will be um, addressed at a later time with the, with the next segment, then um, since all criteria has been met, I'm in support of this amendment. Rich. Uh, <clears throat> I'm glad that the uh, changes open up more open space in the area and uh, leave uh, more of the natural features uh, for the subdivision design. And I feel pretty confident that the developer in the town and uh, the fire department will talk about the fire station in the future and make every effort to make a change if it's feasible. And so I will uh, vote to move this forward tonight. John? Uh, I, I agree very much with what Rich just said. And as this is a, uh, we're only looking at this particular uh, rezoning tract, uh, I'm in favor of moving it forward. Uh, Ruthann? I actually live behind a fire station. So I understand uh, the folks who came forward and, and spoke on this today, I understand their concerns. Um, I think that uh, what not doing this tonight doesn't do is it doesn't move the fire station. What it does do is it, it denies us the opportunity to use the dendritic design engineering that's been uh, offered us. and it's so much nicer than uh, former design options that we've had in the past. Um, <clears throat> I think that the folks who came up and spoke tonight have done a good job of raising the issue. It's certainly on the radar now where it wasn't before. And uh, I hope that, and the developer has said that they're amenable to including uh, members of the community in the discussions about where that fire station could go. I don't know how those talks will be structured um, that's not for me to determine or us to determine. Uh, but I think that the dendritic design that they've done is, is terrific and I'm going to support it. And I'm glad to know that it's uh, that the issue of the fire station has come up and it can be dealt with in the future. Uh, Kim? Um, first of all, I appreciate everybody's comments tonight from the Horse Creek community. And Anthology has been in a phase three plan for quite a while. I understand the concerns of the residents of Horse Creek, um, but that's not what we're voting on tonight is the fire station. And I am I agree with uh, Commissioner Nelson that I think it's become very, uh, it's become a pretty prominent discussion here moving forward when we get into the second phase of where the fire station can or cannot be relocated. Um, I think the dendritic design is amazing um, it opens up a lot more space for Parker residents. So, and I'm looking forward to those discussions about the firehouse, but for tonight and what we're voting on, I will vote in favor of the rezone. All right, I, I don't have a lot to add to my fellow commissioner's statements, although I certainly agree with, agree with Commissioner Nelson that the 
dendritic design has been something we've been pushing for for a long while and to to see a, a project finally come to fruition uh, incorporating those design ideals, uh, I, I find this aspect of it very exciting. Uh, do we have a motion? I move the Planning Commission recommend Town Council approve the requested Anthology North Plan Development Rezoning. A second. It's been moved by John, seconded by Rich. The Planning Commission recommend Town Council approve the requested Anthology North Plan Development Rezoning. <clears throat> I will call the question. Uh, Ileana. Aye. Susan. Aye. Rich. Aye. John. Aye. Ruthann. Aye. Kim. Aye. Chair is aye. And the motion passes unanimously. All right. Thank you. Let me get through my piles of paper here. And... Okay, let's go to six B, Douglas, a public hearing on Douglas 234 filing six, minor development plat continued from October 22nd, 2020. Uh, and we will open the public hearing at 805 uh, and Brianna, we're all yours. Thank you again. Thank you, Chairman Commissioners. This is a proposal for a minor development plat to subdivide the property into 11 commercial lots. The property has been posted and public notice requirements have been met. Can you turn this on? Thank you. The property is located on the Northeast corner of Chambers Road and Hess Road. The property was annexed and zoned as part of the Douglas 326 development in 1987. In 2002, the property was renamed and rezoned to commercial as part of the Douglas 234 plan development. The applicant has submitted this minor development plat to subdivide the property into 11 buildable lots, a landscape tract, and an unbuildable tract for a private drive. The buildable lots will allow for the development of commercial uses on the property per the Douglas 234 plan development. The general land use map within the Parker 2035 master plan identifies this property as being within the community center character area. The property is represented by the blue outline in the center of the map. This designation is intended to serve multiple neighborhoods by providing a variety of commercial and retail service land uses. Based on this analysis, staff has determined that the request to subdivide the property to allow for the future development of commercial uses is consistent with the recommendations of the Parker 2035 Master Plan. The purpose of the minor development plat process is to review lot sizes and layout for compliance with town standards. Two of these requirements are consistency with the land development ordinance and the zoning for the property. The proposed subdivision of the property is consistent with the requirements outlined within the land development ordinance and the zoning of the property. The proposed lots, lot widths, or proposed lot sizes, lot widths, lot coverage, access and circulation proposed meets the minimum requirements outlined. Additional requirements, including building setbacks, building heights, landscaping, and parking will all be determined at time of site plan for each lot. Excuse me. This is Alex with our engineering team. He will provide more information on access. Thank you, Brianna, and good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. Um, the element of this project was the access and the traffic impacts associated with the development. With a minor development plan application like this one that creates buildable lots, the developer is required to construct or fund any improvements necessary to support the public access points or to mitigate the traffic impacts. Engineering staff did perform a thorough review of the traffic study and the construction plans provided by the developer's team to ensure conformance with town criteria. To begin with the access points, um, this project is proposing two access points for the development both of which are in accordance with the 2002 development plan for the Douglas 234 development. 
One is a full movement access point to Chambers Road by way of Red Sky Drive and its roundabout. And the second is a right in, right out only access to Hess Road near the Eastern property boundary. It is also important to note that the proximity of this property to the major intersection of Chambers and Hess was a limiting factor in the planning of these access points. To illustrate this, an aerial view of this location, oh, go back please. <laughs> An aerial view of this location was included on the slide. Um, please notice how far back from the intersection that the medians are located on both Chambers and Hess. This was done to accommodate the ultimate turn lanes necessary at the intersection. So as you can see, that really gives you an idea of the ultimate footprint of that intersection. And really, it kind of encumbers the entire frontage on both Chambers and Hess. So I, I make this point just so you can see why no additional access points were allowed to be taken on Chambers between Hess and Red Sky and also why the access point on Hess Road is limited to a restrictive movement due to its proximity to that major intersection. Next slide, please. As pre previously referenced, this slide shows the original development plan for the overall Douglas 234 development. The blow up view on the right side of the slide highlights the commercial portion of the property. As you can see, this shows the two planned access points that are currently being proposed. No deviations are being requested from this plan. Next slide, please. The developer was required to perform a traffic study for town review that analyzed the project's impacts to adjacent roadways and intersections. As the town reviewed this analysis, staff heard two major concerns from the residents of the adjacent neighborhoods that were related to traffic. The first was regarding the increase in traffic this project would bring to Red Sky Drive. Long term, the commercial development could bring as many as 6,000 new vehicles per day to Red Sky Drive. This would bring the total traffic on the road to about 7,500 vehicles per day. That said, it should be noted that Red Sky Drive is a collector roadway that was designed to handle both commercial and residential traffic for the Douglas 234 development. While the traffic volumes have historically been low on this roadway with the absence of any commercial development, the road and its roundabout were planned to accommodate the additional traffic from the commercial development within town criteria. Staff also received concerns regarding the potential for cut through traffic through the adjacent neighborhoods. Certainly we understand where that concern comes from and that's a common concern we see on corner commercial developments like this that are surrounded by neighborhoods. Uh, town staff really has two ways we can work to address this. Um, the first relates to the traffic mitigation that the developer will be obligated to perform with this project. Um, the mitigation is gonna be focused on improving the operations at the development's main, um, main access point from Chambers Road on Red Sky Drive. The goal is to make that entrance as accessible and convenient as possible for commercial traffic to hopefully avoid forcing them through the neighborhoods when they have to wait to make turns or, or things like that. Um, additionally, staff will commit to continuing to monitor the area for cut through traffic issues as development occurs. The town does have an established program for addressing neighborhood traffic and speeding issues through our traffic division and our police department. So certainly we'll commit to working with the HOA and the residents on solutions if that does end up becoming an issue down the road. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned, it was determined that mid traffic mitigation is required um, by the developer in order to accommodate the traffic that is anticipated to be generated by this development. The developer is obligated to two improvements to help the long-term operation of Chambers and Red Sky Drive. First, the developer is required to fund 100% of the cost of a traffic signal at the Chambers and Red Sky Drive intersection. The developer will provide this funding to the town with the recordation of this minor development plan and the town will then design and construct the traffic signal when the intersection meets required traffic warrants. Second, the developer will be required to widen Red Sky Drive to the south to accommodate a second westbound left turn lane at the intersection. This lane is necessary to provide adequate turn storage for vehicles turning left onto Chambers Road in the long-term forecast. This will also help ensure that that queuing does not impact operations back at the roundabout. That's all. Perfect, thank you, Alex. So staff has reviewed the proposal and has determined that the project is consistent with the 2035 master plan, the land development ordinance, and the Douglas 234 plan development. Utility providers have confirmed capacity and availability. Referral agency comments have been addressed and all public notice requirements have been satisfied. Staff recommends that Planning Commission recommend that Town Council approve the Douglas 234 filing number six minor development plan. Staff is available for any questions that planning commissioners may have. The applicant is also present this evening to answering questions and they would like to provide a presentation for you at this time. 
All right, we'll go through questions to uh, Brianna first. Uh, Ileana? None from me at this moment. Susan? No, qu no questions. Rich? Yeah, I have a question about the right in, right out off of Hess. Will there be a, to confirm if there will be a deceleration lane to turn right and an acceleration turning right out of the, the uh, complex? Yes, um, currently in that area, westbound Hess Road actually has a third um, auxiliary lane, if I remember correctly. So I believe there is one existing already. Okay, all right, thank you. All right, Rich. Uh, John? Can you give me an example of what sort of mitigation you would be using to reduce cut through traffic in the residential neighborhood? Sure, yeah, so, um, so as I mentioned, the town has a program called the Neighborhood Traffic Calming Partnership. It's, again, it's, it's, um, it's administered by the Public Works Department's Traffic Division and then also the Police Department. So there's a number of phases that this program can go through as they look at speeding and cut through traffic issue, but really it comes down to using traffic calming uh, measures to really deter people from wanting to go through that the neighborhood. So that could be anything from speed bumps, raised crosswalks, uh, bulb outs of the curbs, um, as well as increased uh, police enforcement if we do see speeding problems out there. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ruth Ann? No questions at this time. Uh, Kim? Kim? Sorry. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, all right then. Uh, the, does the applicant want to, do we want to put the applicant on the screen and uh, if they were going to make a presentation? Good evening, members of Planning Commission. This is Grant Nelson. I'm not sure if you can hear me. Uh, well, we can, Mr. Nelson. Thank you. Okay. You please state your address for the record. Sure. Uh, my name is Grant Nelson with Republic Investment Group, 5750 DT Parkway, Suite 160, Greenwood Village, Colorado, 80111. Thank you. Thank you. Um, good evening, and, and thank you for uh, having us here today. Again, my name is Grant Nelson, and I'm here to present the uh, minor development plat application for the 13.8 acres at the northwest or northeast corner, sorry, of Chambers and Hess. Uh, I want to thank Brianna and Alex for their presentation and their clarification tonight. Um, with me tonight, well, they're not really with me, but they're here or could be available should you need them, uh, is Andy Tritley with Vintana Capital, Troy Bales and Jack Scannell with Rick Engineering, and Andy Bittner with Sullivan Hayes. Uh, Brianna, let's see, is my right. presentation up? One second. Stop. So I appreciate you guys taking the time to listen to the presentation tonight. When Brianna gets it up, uh, we'll walk through the property history, uh, show you a site plan, the landscape, and then uh, Troy Bales will walk through the transportation infrastructure, similar to what Alex just covered, some of the utilities grading and storm drainage, and uh, I'll walk you through the project schedule uh, when we can get the PowerPoint up. Yep, got that. Sure. One second, Grant. Not a problem. Yeah, let me do. Sorry, there were some technical difficulties again. It's not showing up. Yeah, it, it should pop up on the screen here in a moment. We are on this. I'm not sure either. It's a fancy presentation, I can tell you. <laughs> Is this it? Yeah, that's it. There we go. Thank you. Okay, do uh, you want to go to the next slide? We should have the Jeopardy theme song playing. <laughs>
There we go. Uh, and, and you can even forward past that one as well, if you don't mind. Perfect. All right. Well, it, and I'll try not to take up uh, a whole night here with a quick presentation, but uh, as you're aware, the purpose of this hearing is to present the two planning commission, our minor development plan uh, plat for the 13.8 acres. Uh, since you've already heard staff's presentation, we'll keep going, but the, the drawings to the, the right are the uh, minor development plat that we hope to take to town council and hopefully get approval. So if we can move to the next slide, maybe. So, you know, as Alex and Brianna both indicated, the Douglas 234 zoning was approved in 2002. Um, just to give a quick background of my history in Parker, um, I've been working in Parker on retail development since the year 2000. I worked previously for a real estate investment trust, and we built the Walmart and the Home Depot, the Kohl's that is across the street. And then uh, more recently, I worked with King Supers on the redevelopment of the Cottonwood Center up at uh, Parker Road and Cottonwood Drive across from the Costco. And I'm a partner in the southwest corner of Parker and Hess as well. So I've spent a lot of time in Parker. I like Parker a lot. And uh, what we're trying to do is, is keep expanding Parker to retail, keep, uh, you know, explain to retailers that Parker is a great place to do business. So um, the, the Douglas 234 was, as Brianna indicated, approved in 2002 with the zoning that's in place. Uh, we are keeping that zoning as uh, she explained, we're just trying to do a minor subdivision. Uh, with that 234 zoning, uh, and as Alex described, you know, the, in that approval, a lot of the big decisions were set in place on that day. So the size, the shape, the points of access off of Red Sky and Hess, the drainage, how we access utilities, setbacks, you know, they're all established in that uh, Douglas 234 zoning and uh, we have worked within those parameters and we've worked for the past 16 months with staff and we've worked on the site actually for the last uh, four years to try and bring it to you guys here tonight. So if you could forward to the next slide, Brianna, that'd be great. Uh, the minor subdivision will, as Brianna indicated, and sorry to be repetitive, uh, break this into 11 separate lots. Uh, we are not exactly sure who is gonna go on here now. We have interest from users, um, but this is an unusual shaped site an unusual size maybe is a better way to describe it. It's kind of too big to be anything small and too small to be anything big. So it's, it's kind of a tweener size for retail. So we're platting 11 lots and we think we'll have hopefully 11 different users. Um, we are excited about how this property lays out we think it will uh, be an add to the community. And uh, again, we believe we're in full compliance with Douglas 234. Um, so if you could maybe slide to the next slide, Brianna, that'd be great. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the landscape plan. Uh, our landscape does conform with Parker codes. Uh, we're gonna have tree lawns along Chambers and Hess uh, along Slice Roo Drive. Uh, we're gonna have three relatively small project monument signs um, and then the, the landscape setback, you know, on the west or on the east side of our property that abuts the, the neighbors, you know, when they did this Douglas 234, they uh, platted a, a tract for the homeowners association to give a buffer. We have a 25 foot landscape buffer along our wet eastern boundary there. Uh, then, you know, lot seven will have, you know, a road and a landscape before you would encounter a building in lots eight and 10. And if you can see on the west side of the property there, there's a uh, easement for the storm drainage to go through there, through there that is another 25 feet. So we think, you know, structure to structure, it's over a hundred feet from any, from any home to where a building would be built. So uh, we've tried to be uh, cognizant that there are neighbors next door. We understand there's neighbors and we wanna be good neighbors to them. Um, and this, we believe that this design, that as it was set forth in 2002, is a good design and we can uh, bring it forward. Uh, at this point, I'll hand it over to Troy Bales with Rick Engineering, and he can give you information on the, the various engineering pieces, similar to what Alex covered. Uh, thank you, Grant. Uh, Troy Bales, Rick Engineering Company, address is 9801 East Easter Avenue, uh, Centennial, Colorado, 80112. 
Um, Welcome, Troy. Thank you. Uh, since this is an infill project, we acknowledge, and I'm, and I'm, I'm going to reverberate uh, some of what Alex had mentioned, but uh, we acknowledge that the trap aspect can be scrutinized. We wanted to ensure it got it right. So we spent the better half of the summer addressing the traffic component. Um, this involved a collaboration with our team here at Rick Engineering, um, a local, another, a second local engineering firm, Ferris and Pierce, and the town of Parker Engineering and traffic staff. Um, that resulted in a, a robust traffic study that has been reviewed and approved by town staff. Uh, the, the, the study resulted in two access points uh, as been indicated before, and those are consistent with the Douglas 234 development plan. Uh, infrastructure, again, as Alex had mentioned, will be uh, provided by the development will be a, a, an additional left turn lane on Red Sky Drive, totaling two dedicated left turn lanes and um, the full funding of a, a traffic signal for uh, installation when the, by the town when, when it's warranted. In addition, on site, Slice Roo Drive does have detached walkways um, for uh, pedestrian connectivity throughout the development and uh, adjacent to roadways. Uh, if you could go to the next slide, please. Water and sewer services will be provided by Parker Water Sanitation District. As shown in the diagram, we connect to their facilities at two locations for the water and one location for the sewer. All, all proposed facilities have been reviewed and approved by Parker Water Sanitation District to meet all applicable standards. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, we have prepared a drainage study for this project. Runoff of this project drains into an existing storm drain system located at the eastern edge of our boundary, as shown on the diagram. Uh, detention for the increased runoff has been provided by a downstream regional detention, detention basin that was designed with the proposed development in mind. All proposed on-site storm facilities been, have been um, reviewed and meet all applicable criteria and standards. Uh, with regards to grading, the site generally, the existing site generally slopes from the north uh, west to the southeast. Uh, the proposed grading for this project stays consistent with that, with the existing conditions and maintains a similar character. And uh, with that, I'll turn it back over to, uh, to Grant to close out the presentation. Thank you, Troy. Uh, perfect. Um, the quick project schedule is we're, you know, hopefully going you know, to finalize the minor development process in plat process here in the next uh, 60 days. Um, we'll start, start site work in December of 2020 or January of 2021. We believe that'll take six to seven months and mid 2021 will be complete. And that uh, once it is complete, hopefully we'll have some lots and some retailers that come out on site uh, soon. So if you go to the next slide, please, Brianna. Um, and as staff has already briefed you, we, we believe we're in uh, conformance with all approval criteria and uh, we believe that we meet them and we are here should you have any questions. Uh, the last slide, if you don't mind, Brianna. Um, so we, we are here, uh, as I said, Andy Traitley, Troy and I are ha here to answer questions that staff have and we appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Grant. Uh, questions for the applicants, uh, Ileana? None for me. Uh, Susan? No questions. Rich? Yes, I have a question. I know you mentioned between lots 8, 10, and 11 and the entrance, there's a buffer of approximately 100 feet between the back of the buildings and the residential area. Is there a, a wall plan for that area also to enhance the buffer? No, at this point, it, it's just landscape. Um, a wall hasn't okay. been discussed with town staff or with our team. Okay. All right. Uh, John? Uh, no questions. Ruth Ann? I, I just have a couple of questions. My, my first one is an indulgence. Slice through. Where does that come from? <laughs> Uh, it's uh, an, a name that our broker, Mr. Andy Bittner, came up with. Uh, <laughs> and it is, a, uh, is a name of a golf tournament at uh, Lakewood Country Club. And so he made it so we indulged him. So we are happy to indulge you to answer the question. 
it's just nice to have it on the record on where some of these names come from sometimes. <laughs> the other question I have is, um, you said that these are tweener type lots. It's like, you know, not, not big, not little. So could you tell me just category wise, what types of retail establishments are attracted to this particular <clears throat> tweener size lot? Sure. Uh, and it's similar to the, the lot that I'm a partner in down at Parker and Hess. You know, that's nine acres. And it's, again, the same thing, too big to be anything small, too small to be anything big. So it's community retail, um, small scales, community retail. You know, the largest uh, tenant we or user we would have out here is probably 10 to 12,000 square feet. Uh, the smallest is probably 2,000 square feet. So um, and I we don't know exactly what this is going to be just because we're we're pretty, you know, early in the marketing process. Um, but, you know, community, uh, small scale community retail is what we're expecting will be the users that are interested in, you know, obviously the anthology project to the south. And when that builds out and the, you know, the, the new houses, the new traffic that will come up and down Chambers and S is what the retailers will be interested in. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, Kim. Um, I do have a couple. It's always nice to see that things are planned for a full build out. The, the landscape plan was a little deceiving to me. So I'm, I'm just trying to picture this in my head and maybe I'm way too far ahead of myself, but I kind of picture a through street and then are you looking at more of like a walking venue or will this be more of like, I hate the term strip mall, but will the brother be some big parking areas and then you can walk from shop to shop or restaurant to restaurant. Yeah. And, and the landscape plan is, you know, it's the landscape of the, the, what we're going to install or what's the, you know, the landscape that's required when each one of these lots build out each user that comes on here will have their own landscape plan, their own pedestrian connectivity plan. Uh, and as it starts building out piece by piece, it will start to make a lot more sense. But yeah, as it sits there today, it looks like there's not much landscape, but each of those lots, Brianna probably can describe it better than I can, but they'll, they'll have their own landscape requirements on each lot. So lot five, the big corner lot, you know, they'll install landscape. All of these lots will install their landscape with their building when they construct it. But there will be connectivity in and amongst those shops, I guess is my question. Sure. Yeah. Every, not every lot is going to have its own drive. Right. No, it okay. there. And there is a, a we are installing with construction a sidewalk all along Slicer Drive. So. OK, perfect. Thanks. OK. Uh, we as this is a public hearing, we will open the discussion to public comment. We ask that people that are commenting keep their comments to the item before us right now, and that you hold your comments to three minutes and give your name and address for the record. Do we have hands raised, Rosemary? We do, Chair. It's uh, Gary again. Okay. Okay, can you yeah. hear me okay? Now we can hear you just fine, Gary. Okay, sorry about this, guys. The, both of these items we're talking about tonight directly ref reflect where I live. Um, and this one, even more so than the firehouse, believe it or not, um, because I literally back up to this uh, venue. So I guess my question for the developer would be, um, and we've had some dialogue with them prior, uh, surrounding the landscape and how are we going to uh, zero, or not zero scape, but landscape between our house and this development in a fashion that assures that we're going to have a little bit of privacy. Um, I know that that lot behind us is way up on the hill and um, somebody brought it up earlier. I was kind of under the assumption at one point that they were going to put a wall back behind us and between this uh, development. And from what I understand now, it's only going to be landscaping. So my question would be, has that changed? And then uh, the second question would be it, it, behind, so between our house and the development, which would mean 
the east side of this development, are people and vehicles going to be allowed to cut through behind this development now? Because I was kind of under the impression that there wouldn't be any sort of access back there. Um, so I guess that's more of a question for the developer, I guess. And if he could comment on that, I would greatly appreciate it. Yeah, Gary, when we have everybody's uh, comment, we'll come back and answer those. All right. Thank you. You bet. All right. Next hand, Rosemary. Yes, Kathy Norcutt. Kathy, welcome. Could you state your address for the record, please? Kathy, are you there? Sorry. Hi, I'm here. And my hand must, must have been up from earlier because I didn't have a question. Thank you. Oh, okay. Well, well thanks, Kathy. It took it down. <laughs> yeah. All right, next. Events. Uh, somebody named Stoops. Uh, could you give us uh, your name? Uh, yes, this is Chris Stoops. Hi, Chris. You would ask something. Could you give your address for the record? Yeah. Please? Uh, ask it. Our, I would like to vote for an olive garden and I'd like really nice sitting areas and <laughs> you should. <laughs> trees. And... Is Kathy still on? <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Uh, okay. Kathy, I'm, you could I'm, I'm sorry. That's all right. Um, yes, uh, my name is Chris Deuce, and my address is 12171 South Red Sky Drive. Okay, thank you. Okay, yep. Um, I have three questions or three concerns. Um, our house butts right up to lot number 11. Uh, lot number 11 is just on the other side of our property. And the first question or concern I have is that there seems to be uh, an additional easement for lots 8 and 10, uh, but not, it doesn't seem to be that way on, on lot 11. And as just concern there, um, being right up against our home, that if we could also have that additional easement there, if there is one. And and also, uh, what's that landscaping going to look like? Is there going to be a berm there or, or, or a few trees? Um, so that, that's a concern also. Um, the other thing is the traffic study. I know that you guys have done your due diligence. Thank you, Troy. Thank you, Grant, for, for doing that additional traffic study. I don't know if what you have planned out convinces me that this isn't going to be a concern for our neighborhood. Um, I don't know when you did the study. Our gold rush, you know, I know with COVID going on and whatnot, maybe doesn't look like it's that busy, but, you know, two to three times a day, there's quite a bit of traffic that backs all the way up around that roundabout. And if you're going to have additional traffic coming through, it, it's just not going to happen. So I don't know if you've considered um, maybe widening South Red Sky, um, maybe into lot one a little bit so people can exit off of there and not be involved in that roundabout or part of that traffic. Uh, but I, I also have a hard time believing that people are not gonna start cutting through the neighborhood when they see that school traffic there and, and they're trying to get out. So um, yeah, just concerned on who's gonna take care of our roads at Horse Creek here and, and, and all the through traffic that's gonna be going on. Um, okay. And then number three, sorry for taking so much time here. No, that's fine. The, I know you don't know what lots, or who's, what businesses are going in there, but um, we, we see a sign right outside our home that says daycare coming soon. And I don't know if that's meant for lot 11, but you know, I, I have three children and not that I don't enjoy the sound of children. I just don't think I'd enjoy hearing them all day long in my backyard. So wasn't sure if lot 11 was designated for that or not. And those are my three. Okay. Questions. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Uh, next hand, Rosemary is um, Alice Ridlin. Alice, welcome. Are you there, Alice? One second. Okay. Shall we come back to Alice, Rosemary? She went to Go past. There you go. Um, a bit more. I'm not sure. She shouldn't be able to talk herself. Right. But there's yeah. no microphone. It doesn't look like her mic's working. Okay. Oh, uh, come back. So chair, it looks like her mic is not working for some reason, okay. so we'll come back to her. Okay. 
So the next one is Kathy Santelli. Kathy, welcome. Are you there? Hello, I'm here. Oh, great. Would you Hi. state your address for the record, please? It is 12136 South Swift Fox Way, Parker 80134. Okay, thank you. I live in the house that is on the north east corner across um, Red Sky. So I'm going to be across the street basically from lot 11. And I see every single day um, a very long line of cars coming around that roundabout and down to Gold Rush at 8 a.m. and at 3 p.m. and sometimes when there's events, um, parent teacher meetings. This traffic backs all the way out to Chambers. So that is going to, that's always going to happen because the school is 900 feet from this planned development. So I know that the, the lot's always been planned for commercial. I, I'm not disputing that, you know, it, it shouldn't happen. But the, the, the fourth leg of the roundabout being the only ingress egress for south and eastbound traffic in and out of this development is, is going to be a big problem, especially since the corner um, is typically, there's a lot of traffic coming um, west on Hess and north on Chambers every weekday morning. Um, that's going to be prime real estate for a coffee user. So anyone who wants to get to that coffee shop on that corner that's coming south on Chambers, um, they're going to have to cut through our neighborhood. And right about the time when school is, uh, is starting. Um, also, a lot of the children who live in Horse Creek across to the west of Chambers, they all come across that road to go to Gold Rush Elementary. Um, so there's a lot of cars, especially when there's bad weather, uh, just neighborhood people bringing their kids to school. Um, and lastly, there are a lot of children um, and their parents that walk to and from, that are on bikes, all around that roundabout all the time. And I, I've already seen um, the speed and uh, carelessness which with people come around that roundabout because I'm the very first house that sees it. Um, so I worry about the safety of the kids. Um, when connecting to this development. Okay. All right. Thank you, Kathy. Mm -hmm. uh, next hand, Rosemary. That's all we have, except we can go back to you. Uh, Alice. Scrolls on top. She's wrong, Tom. Can you see what you're doing? Says there's two east hands. Yeah. Go to the top. Scroll up. Uh, they didn't get a chance to talk yet. Yeah. We didn't. Chris, Chris. Ian. Okay, we have Chris Jorgensen. Chris, are you there? Oh, hang on. You're on, Kathy. Oh, You're on, Chris. Here you go. Yep. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Awesome. Yes. Great. Okay, so I, I'm. I also. In part of Horse Creek, and I, I'm affected by this. Um, Could you give us your address for the record, please, Chris? Okay, um, 16550 East Firefly Avenue. I also Thank you. You're one. welcome. Thank you. Um, so I, I just think um, being, being people who live on Red Sky and they had to have open, the split rail fences because they are, they back up the open space, but now with this building, these buildings being commercial, it might not it won't be very appealing looking at the back of buildings. Um, and I, I don't know if there's a way to um, change the rules so that we don't have to have split rail fencing for the homeowners there, or if there's a way to build a wall so they can uh, 
you can look at a privacy fence versus the back of a building. I think that'd be appreciative. Um, and I also agree with the, uh, the school traffic. I mean, I think honestly, the Spice Aru will might, might get a lot more traffic since they'll have a, that roundabout will be another street. Um, so that might actually help, but um, just a concern. Okay. All right. Thank you, Chris. And then we have Ian Efner next. Ian? Are you there? Hi, and this is actually Shelly Elfner. Thank you Hi, for Shelley. letting me speak for a moment. Um, so I work for Douglas County Schools, um, Gold Rush being one of the 17 schools that I work for and, and move through the traffic on a daily basis. Um, I also have two children that attend Gold Rush that I drop off and pick up every day. Um, and as many people have already spoken about, um, you know, the traffic comes from three different directions in that neighborhood. Um, there are people walking and biking um, everywhere and you really do have to be careful as far as where you're driving. The traffic backs all the way up to chambers as it is. Um, and it takes quite a while for that traffic to clear out in the morning and also clear out in the afternoon. Um, I guess my biggest question would be for the developers. I know they've done traffic studies in the past. I don't know when um, the latest one happened but I do know this year, um, Gold Rush looks very different between the students that chose to do e-learning and the students that chose to um, wait to attend Gold Rush until next year. That's an additional 100 students that will be coming back most likely next year. And so that traffic will actually increase significantly. And so I do think that um, getting a very accurate traffic study and really considering the safety of our neighbors and the people that live in Parker is something that needs to be considered. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, further hands, Rosemary? No chair, thank you. Okay. No more. What, one more? No, no more. Okay, all right, then we will close the public comment portion of the meeting. Uh, Commissioners, do we need further information from staff? Uh, Ileana? None from me. Uh, Susan? No. Uh, Rich? Uh, none. John? Uh, none. Ruth Ann? I was just wondering if you could address the timing of the traffic studies. And I was also curious to know what the traffic scores were during the time period of uh, school starting and school letting out, you know, what grade it was. Yeah, so I can, I'll, I'll take that. And I also kick it over to Troy to kind of fill in the details, but um, we definitely talked with Rick up front about making sure we got good count on the school. Cause we know that is an important part of the traffic in that location. So I believe traffic counts were taken. Um, I believe it was before COVID last year. Troy can give me the exact dates, but it was definitely during a school day and it was not this year. So it was under full enrollment conditions. Um, and I'm sorry, what was your second question, Commissioner? The, the, the grade, what, what grade was the traffic during the peak use uh, during school time? Oh, the level of a service? A to F, yeah, what was it? Gotcha, yeah. I defer that to Troy if I go, he probably knows the study a little bit uh, more detail than I do. Troy? Uh, yeah, yes. Um, the counts were taken on a Wednesday, uh, August 21st of 2019, prior to COVID. Uh, the existing intersection operation at uh, Chambers and Hess is a level of service B. Okay. Um, so uh, just under level of service A. Segments, uh, segment for Red Sky Drive uh, is a level of service A. Okay. And that was that was a level A during the time of of the, the kids being picked up and dropped off that during those hours. Did it ever, uh, what what did the what was the lowest it ever dropped to? Um that was the that was the average. Um not seeing data on a on the lowest, but you know, that's our peak hour. Um that's that's usually at the peak hour is how we define the level of service. Mm -hmm. And and so that's the peak hour is usually during the school time in the morning and at night and the evening. The peak okay. hour, the peak hour identified in, with these counts was uh, seven a.m. to eight a.m. Okay. 
And uh, are most retail establishments open before or after 7 and 8 a.m. or do they open later? Uh, aside from like the coffee shops and things like that. Most of them have like a, a later opening date, don't they? Time? Yeah, most retailers, uh, Commissioner Nelson, are, you know, unless they have some sort of breakfast service like a coffee shop, you know, nine or 10 o'clock is usually when most of them open, so. Okay, but the, the, the traffic study showed that it, was, it never dropped below an A. Is that correct? Well, it Commissioner, really which, which intersection are you referring to exactly? The roundabout or um, Red Sky Drive and Chambers? I'm talking about the backup that was discussed on Chambers uh, around the roundabout. That's the section I'm talking about. I'd like to have a, a, a clearer picture of, of exactly what kind of traffic they're talking about there. Yeah. I'll, I'll defer, again, defer that to Troy, but one thing I will add is, you know, pro probably, you know, the bottom line is that the town probably needs to work with the school to improve that traffic situation out there. You know, with the lack of background traffic in the area, it really hasn't probably been that big of an issue that they've been backing up into that roundabout, but really their operations need to be improved um, to eliminate a lot of that queuing. Cause really that, that is impacting both the residents out there and this could impact the businesses out there long-term as well. So um, it is something that needs to be addressed with the school. And I know our traffic engineers are always looking for ways to improve operations at schools. Um, so that's something that we need to work on with the school for sure. Okay, thank you. Uh, Kim? There was one concern brought up with regards to possible a possible easement behind, if I understood it, kind of behind the um, platted development. I'm assuming there's not going to be any roadway between those developments and basically the folks that back up to, to it. That's, that's correct. The slice of rue will be through the middle of the development and that will be the only traffic. The, per our new development design standards, there is a 25 foot landscape buffer for commercial uses adjacent to residential. So there will be a 25 foot buffer along all of those lots adjacent to the residential. Okay. That's all right. right. Okay. All right. Uh, if there's no further questions, we will close the public hearing at 851 and commissioner discussion. Eliana. Nothing for me. I see this as not as cut and dry, but certainly uh, there, I have no outstanding questions or concerns. Uh, Susan. Um, I, I'm, in, I'm in support and I agree with Eliana. Uh, Rich? I think the proposed plat meets the uh, goals for the tw uh, Parker 2035 master plan. And so it, uh, I'm in favor of moving it along to the uh, town council for approval. John? Uh, I, I kind of like the size of the, of the facilities. It tends to end up with more local ownership, more local uh, employment opportunities for the town as opposed to having big boxes or, or major franchisees come into the operation. So uh, I'm in favor of it. Ruth Ann? Uh, I'm, in, I'm in favor of approving this. Um, I would encourage uh, staff to be proactive in approaching the school and talking to them as, as they're talking about having retail in there as early as 2021. That would be next school year. So no time like the present to get on that. Um, because uh, I get concerned with kids in a roundabout on bikes and people crossing the street. Uh, the idea is to be a neighborhood shop so that people can walk back and forth. So uh, whatever we can do to make sure that it's as safe for pedestrians and bike riders is uh, I I'm in favor of. So yes, I'll, I'll approve this. Kim? Um, I concur with Commissioner Nelson. I like, I do like the, the area for the commercial um, development and I hope we get some great shops in there. However, I have a little bit of concern with, it sounds like there's a lot of traffic and all of us have lived, all of us live probably near a school or have before in our life. So 
I understand those concerns and I'm with Commissioner Nelson. I hope staff really works with the school to improve some of that traffic flow so these residents aren't so impacted by this commercial development. Thank you, Kim. Uh, I certainly concur with my fellow commissioners and I, I like to see that this development team has a history of working in Parker and developing in Parker and uh, ha has a good track record. So I've, I'm sure uh, that this will be a, a, a quality development. Uh, so do we have a motion? I move the planning commission recommend town council to approve the Douglas 234 filing six minor development plat. I second. It's been moved by John, seconded by Ileana. <laughs> the planning commission recommend town council approve the Douglas 234 filing six minor development plat. And I will call the question. Ileana? Aye. Susan? Aye. Rich? Aye. Uh, John? Aye. Ruthann? Aye. Kim? Aye. Chair is aye. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, Bryce, Rosemary, any items, staff items? Uh, thank you, Chair. Just a reminder on the next meeting, November 12th, there will be training in advance of it starting at 530. Okay. All right, then uh, we will adjourn at 855. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you, staff. Have a good, good night, weekend. Everyone. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.